really bad. It could be, but it's time. We've got Malaysians on both sides this time round, but will it be the Nepalese representatives taking away in four miracle on the red side against Team SMG, the favorites to take, to take a field. spot to M5 here at the wild cards on the blue side? It is quite a challenge. It is quite a challenge. Team Four Miracle right now, they are up against the favorites, and right now actually, Team SMG are banning. I'm not gonna say they are focusing on a certain person or even a meta is um it's a little bit messy. I think it's are they like taking an apple from each tree, like one assassin and one XP Romish pick mm -hmm. and then a, a gold laner? Yeah, for both teams, it's kind of a, a weird situation right here. Because if the idea is to deny a strong gold laner, then why are both teams banning it out, right? They're kinda like banning towards each other. Makes me kind of feel that maybe the attention was going to be on the mid lane instead, right? That's how I think it's, it's hinting here. Okay, okay. We're not seeing hard target bans, but at the very least, we're getting a rough idea of what's coming out, right? At, at the very least, I could say that Bruno Sasa absolutely hates dealing with it. He doesn't enjoy playing it too very often. And that's why going for a Guinevere as a overall good flex pick for the side of Team SMG is a good way to open. Uh, at this point, I think that Nolan is forbidden. Yeah, <laughs> he's 15, taboo. 15th ban, I think, yeah. if I recall correctly. And by the way, <coughs> big uh, big change right here. Masarab is actually in the roster. I just realized that. So there's a bit of a substitution Ooh, going on for Miracle. The previous data might not be as accurate any longer. Mm, yeah, that's actually a really good point here. And I'm guessing that's why they're going for the Terizla pretty early on. And they're pairing it up with the Valentina. <laughs> See? Caster Blast actually works. It's working out for the first time in a very long time, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it is see. working. It is working. May maybe, I don't know so far. I don't know about myself, but I don't know if I have a curse, like a uh, Caster Curse or a Caster Blast. Let's figure out through all the series itself. So, so far we have seen that Guinevere... Actually, maybe I have a Caster Curse because I started this series saying that we will not see Guinevere that much and it just keeps on coming mm -hmm. as a rumor, as a jungler, as like anywhere and everywhere. So, yeah, maybe I'm, I'm cursed after all. Maybe. I mean, you also predicted for Falcons and they did not come out on top yesterday. There is that as well. For now though, let's get back into the game. Oh my lord, this is an insane draft here. Guinevere, Faramis and Mathilda. Three very hotly contested picks. And for, for Miracle, Teresa and Valentina can be good. And technically they have dealt with the Faramis by having the IMU from Valentina. But with the Mathilda and the Guinevere, I think they're going to be out match when it comes to beginning a fight and following up on a fight as well. I think what you're trying to get there is outmaneuvered because at the very least we're thinking at like, you know, surface level, she steals uh, she steals the alt, you try to pop the call uh, the call altar once again, oh sorry, the nether realm as they call it nowadays, and then your opponent decides to do so. But with the Matilda, at the very least you can get a little bit more flexible with it. So I very much like the Akai locked in for the side of Form Miracle mm. to add that second layer. Yes, you're, it's not a guiding win, but at the very least it's a disengage. So Guinevere with 100% win rate, that does say that it is quite dangerous that she is open, right? With For a sure. Like 100% as like whenever she is big, she wins. Well the stats don't lie man, but so, now that you've mentioned that, you get concerned. You just said that maybe there's some kind of curse element working right here. Well we, we see the win rate finally break the 100 or is it going to continue being one of the most dominant heroes in the wildcard series right now? The expert though ban away from, from Miracle. That's we new. We haven't seen it yeah. so far. And it's responded by <laughs> Ixia as well. This is a wild <laughs> drafting phase. Yeah, it, it is, is a wild card after all. It is the wild cards after all. That is fair. And shouts out to somebody else who's also having a birthday. Apparently, Lung, uh, the analyst from the side of Team SMG, oh, is really? having his birthday. Thanks to one of the audience members pointing it out. Once again, shout out to the SMG crowd out here. But let's get into that final ones, right? I'm guessing that Team SMG, now that they've already kind of pre uh, predicted or expected to get this winning matchup for the side of Sasa, that's where I feel that Coach Powell is going to be focusing on for their last ban, but I'm not hey, sure about for for Miracle. The proof um, well, alive. I think that both teams have prepared so well because they do have some wild bans already. They have the X work, they have the X. Yeah, maybe we'll even like see something way wilder that we aren't already seeing. But 
Why pressure the gold so hard so far, even though no team has secured that gold lane? I think in a way, it's, it might be a benefit for the side of For Miracle. We were talking about how they like to play weird gold laners. Now with all the common gold laners banned out, yeah. SMG might be the ones thrown into unfamiliar territory. So, is it a Beatrix or a Clint thing we will see here? Potentially. Ooh. I know that Sasa can play Clint. I know that he plays Beatrix as well. If we're looking at for Miracle's side, the most standard uh, modus operandi in this particular case mm -hmm. is going to be the Beatrix. Very reliable, and even if you're losing lane, you can just clear the wave and not interact with your opponent. Do you agree, Mr. TAA? I think the, the wave clear is definitely something that can be used for sure. For, for Miracle, they do go with that Beatrix, man. So, Wave Clear, in a way, does favor them. So we'll see. With mm. Wave Clear, what can they get? Because with ah. Akai, the assumption is that it's always going to be about the neutral objectives. But we've seen that Akai can be used aggressively to just pin people down <laughs> with the heavy spin as well. Yeah, we can see that there's also something new here. A new fact, Miku choose a gun to control his emotion and ha emotions, not emotion, emotions and, ha and handwritings in his arm to remind him to be calm. So Miko have his own like pre-game preparations just to be in the zone. The chewing gum thing, it, it, it is real. It is real. He does that so throughout confirmed. the entire season of MPL MY. The handwriting, interesting way of putting it, but yes, the writing <laughs> on his hand, oh. it's a Team SMG thing. It is so that they remember what they're supposed to do in that I, game. I thought it helps him like with his handwriting. I didn't know that he ha he writes. He has his literal hand. writing <laughs> on his hand. <laughs> it's one of those things. It's a team SMG thing to kind of keep uh -huh. them in the zone. It's almost like a checklist oh, on their that? arm, like a grocery list, Ooh. but with a diggy as well. That's interesting because the engage from SMG isn't very uh, isn't very ultimate reliant. So going with a diggy, there's gonna be times where the diggy is gonna be forced to use the time journey and there will still be things available for SMG. Although, the fact that they have alarm bombs to try and scout out, along with uh, having an Akai, there are ways for sure for them to maneuver around here. If they can kite back in and out of a fight or catch Stormy, then maybe that is where they can get a big advantage. Well, actually, Team SMG is like quite confusing while they are drafting because I've seen Saxa play Benedetta just perfectly in the jungle so at a certain point i said like maybe we'll see something really wild and we have like a weird mechs but i think let's get this game started all right with that being said welcome everybody to our second best of three match here at the wild card states of the m5 world championships one of these teams are looking for the win let's find out who it's gonna be team smg up against their opponents for Miracle. SMG on the blue side, for Miracle on the red. Well, they choose to be violent. Well, they choose to be serious since the beginning. Oh, they don't, show any, they don't choose anything right now, but to wait for a bit, to cool off for a bit, to just, like, sit, let's say, analyze everything at this short break until the Marshall see what's wrong on the stage, just to make sure that this game will be fair for both sides. How much do you want to bet that on Team SMG, on one of those players' hands, it says, expect a pause? <laughs> <laughs> expect a pause? I mean, it's very possible. We talked about a, a bit about this yesterday, man, because in theory, it's just a pause, but there's also a lot of things you have to keep in mind during this time, so you can't really forget a lot of things that you have to do, especially in the beginning of a game where every single second really counts for the rotation, for the jungle clear. So having a checklist on your arm, that could be the new meta. So we take a look at some cosplayers right here. The Leslie, huh. that is well known for For Miracle, and wow. the Lo Yi. Wait, when did they get here? I, I, I'm I pretty sure we coming. walked from the stage to the table. I didn't see any cosplayers. When did they just suddenly appear? They used Wait. the relocation. Oh! Lo Yi, dude, let's go! <laughs> I should have known. I should have known better. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for the most part, right, when we're leaning in towards what's going to really affect the game, this Terizla, yes, it is a problem because you want to kind of collect together, you want to pop on the Nether Realm, and all of a sudden the penalty zone comes out. But have you witnessed Smooth on this Benedetta? He's kind of nutty with it. Well, at least after this time finishes, we will see soon if they will manage to make that Benedetta work. And will they manage? Like, I seen that Team Umbrella Squad are Yo. cheering for a certain team. Are they cheering? 
for Team SMG. Hard to say. Hard to say which side they're sitting on. I think they're in front of them, oh, but then for they could reverse. Oh, they're on for Miracle's side. Mm. Well, that was, uh, I think that was Mar Marl and Black March, if I'm not mistaken. And behind them, actually, you're seeing yet another cosplayer. They're preparing oh. to show him on the stage. Looking kind of fancy wow. with no it, too, way. dude. Wow. Yo. No it, way! Okay, okay, okay. Hang on, hang on. They can't see it on the chill. screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, foreshadowing, foreshadowing. Fair yeah, shadowing. Yeah. But I, I, need, I need to throw that. I need to throw that. It is, it is the most, let's say, w awaited reveal for a cosplay. Well, we haven't seen it. We're not going to see it just yet because we're going to go straight back into the Land of Dawn for now. Mm. There we go. We are now in. We are now in. We are one minute in without anything, without any casualties, no invading, nothing is happening at the Land of Dawn. For Miracle just playing the basic game and also at the same time, Team SMG are doing the same thing. But what's actually so annoying is knowing how much that Guinevere can flip everything around, especially if she went for a full tank set. Ooh, you see the gold in here, Yahiko getting zoned out a bit. I'm concerned a bit more about the diggy right here. Because mm. in theory, with all the such mobility, the reverse time can be a huge problem, man. You, you think you have a dash, you can get out. Before you know it, you get pulled back in, and that's the end of you. That could be used uh, very well by the Matilda. Miko running the basic emblem as well as a clock on the diggy. So they're both going to be having a bit more of an mm. attrition battle. And they're both just waiting in the gold lane. Yeah, as I told you, they are treating their gold lane as a king. Yahiku and clock on the top lane. They are in their each other, like having each other's back. And at the same time, Team SMG are doing the same exact thing. So, so far, so good. So far, no kills. Nothing is happening except for that like little invade from the side of Saxa. But Team SMG might be cooking something. I think if they're going to try and make something happen, it will be at the neutral objective. But Luna, with Lunatic Panda being oh, there, whoa, whoa. he's going to jump on. Uh, they go in pretty hard with the Electo final blow, and I think that's also the Petrify coming out from Smooth, but unfortunately the angle just wasn't there. This turtle should still fall into the hands of the side of Team SMG, because at the end of the day, the Akai was chopped out. Was it a really good move to just leave that turtle full free? Well, I mean, what can they do otherwise? That's the problem with having your main tank also being your jungler, right? You're prone oh. to getting poked oh. down, and Miko is trying to go for a 1v1. A bit ambitious, but backup is available, but they get flanked out. Up oh, top side, Stormy, he's able to get pulled. The time reversal pulls him oh, back clock. in, but look at Xerox, he's right behind Miko. Miko should be confident in getting out of here uh, well, because he knows that the Nether Realm was the stolen alt and not the Circling Eagle. I don't know Wait. how much comp... Wait, what He's happened? going back in, he's going back in on that top yeah. side, right? He's still annoying a Lunatic Panda. This has got to be a little frustrating. I was about to tell you how much courage does it take to just keep annoying Akai while knowing that he has his ult ready. Well, I think you can see the rest of the map, but now Saks are coming in. Oh, but the Violet Requiem has already been used. Good hits, but now Masa Saxa. can look to punish this. Even, ret uh, even the Retribution had to be committed to try wow. and get him out. But no, Saxa still going to be giving first blood over to four Marigold. Masa Rab takes the first kill. It is actually a really good first blood in terms of like... Teams SMG have been pressuring the jungle for four Miracle, but on the counter, on the irony of it. Team SMG's jungler is the one to fall first. For Miracle responded really well to that aggression right there. And they're, you know, just dealing with the harass pretty okay. They don't really have any sustained tools, but generally they're all tanky enough. The Xerox. Oh, he gets pulled over the wall. Oh. He was forced to use Netherrealm super early on. Miko cannot go any further than this. No circling eagle for him, but keep in mind 22 more seconds until the next neutral spawn. I think at some point, I, I, I actually just watch the, the SMG names, but oh, before that, there was like a lot of ultimates and a lot of action happening at the mid lane, but looking at the names, Smooth, Saxa, Stormy, Sasa, I think that Miku needs to change his name to, some, to something that starts with an S. Siko. Yeah, maybe, Siko. <laughs> so he can go Siko mode. <laughs> He's gone with Siko mode, that'd be awesome. Honestly, that'd be really, really cool. But in the meantime, let's see. Next neutral objective, we're seeing that SMG is already on top of it and they're continuing to be annoying to Lunatic Panda. Circling Eagle and they're getting Smooth who's rotating way too fast with Rizla to keep up, to continue to invade and be annoying. On bottom side, we do see that three members are trying to get some gold plating. Don't get too much of it, but here comes Stormy as well as Miko forcing Clock to flicker out of there. Mind games, mind games. <laughs> 
difficult time here for, um, for America Esports. They have the Akai, but they don't even have any pressure in the waves, in the lanes to really try and gather around the turtle objective. Masarap in particular, it seems like he's having an okay laning phase, but he's never Ooh, been participating in clock. Okay, they managed to get the alt out of clock for now, and that means the bottom tier one is going to fall. Ooh, smooth. Was looking for the angle, but I think it's a little too soon, and now they start pulling back. They don't want to press that advantage and give away free kills. Well, I, would, I wouldn't say 4 Miracle need a Miracle anymore right, to, to win against SMG, but SMG are forcing their base. I, I would say like, they have so they have so much confidence in whatever they are doing whenever they, they are invading, laning, walking in the map, having micro and micro skills. But on the other side, 4 Miracle so far, I think so good. For, for Miracle, I wouldn't say so good. 2k gold disadvantage against a team that's so aggressive like Team SMG. Not to mention Sasa still farming up without getting any interruptions at all. It's gonna be a bit difficult what in the late game. What about their late game though? Mm -hmm. For Miracle, what about their late game? They have the Beatrix and Valentina, so some damage. And they have Utility in the Diggy, who has mm. rushed the flesh of the Oasis, by the way. Oh. So the time journey can be used as a saving tool. Ouch. Beautiful play! Setup coming in for the side of Team SMG. Guiding wins straight into the circling eagle. The pull socks up through. And now they're instantly invading on the orange side of Four Miracle, pushing out Lunatic's Panda once again. Miko, he's being annoying, but Xerox, he needs to maintain his farm. Unfortunately for him, he can only back up his teammates in the lane. Unfortunately, not press it into the jungle. Miko is irritating. Miko is annoying. And he is playing those mind games to Lunatic Panda. He's just whenever or wherever Lunatic Panda is in somewhere, he knows that Miko is waiting just by. Miko now has the flag of the Oasis as well. So it's going to be an equal shielding battle later on. But I think the big difference right here is Smooth, man. He's been around mm. the place and Miko is very casually drives by, gets some information. Oh, Can he smooth. get punished though? Smooth! Uh, I think he should be fine. I think his eye for an eye came up a little bit earlier, but he doesn't mind getting pulled back to try to bait something out of for the side of Four Miracle. 110 seconds until we do see the first Lord spawn of that game. But again, if we're talking about Arataras, it's two to nothing. And yeah, I, I think that at this point, I wouldn't say Team Miracle don't need a mirror. I'm not gonna like use that phrase so much, but Team Miracle at a certain point have to do something because so far they are not even trying to respond. They are just on the defensive side. They can't really do much when their laners are just losing 1v1, especially with Smooth going in there. Serox! Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, they counter circling Eagle to get himself out of there. Very dangerous stuff with Team SMG. Walking Zaxa. up even closer. Panda quickly dropping the heavy spin on towards the clone, and that's a Major ultimates, big ultimates for the side of Four Miracles, resources already gone. That's a problem right here. They're just using all their ultimates defensively, so they're kind of getting a chance Ooh. to really counter aggress. Yahiko now trying to get something on smooth. smooth. Oh, he should be okay here. He should be totally fine. He's got the ult, he's got for the eye for an eye. Dun doesn't even need to sweat it. I told you, his Benedetta kind of cracked. Yeah, you, you had so much confidence, Gideon, when I was saying that. I, I didn't have the same confidence about Smooth, but it seems like you like, like know the guy so closely because. Petrify not needing to use that Petrify? Uh, well, <clears throat> here's the right moment to try and go for that Petrify plays. But right now, look at how Form America are playing, man. They just force a group together, and mm -hmm. they're losing objectives left and right. They're not dropping any kills, but the gold difference is slowly but surely catching up due to the farming speed of the members of Team SMG. And look at Sasa, dude. He is two levels ahead, probably leagues difference in gold. As Miko just plays this casual certain <laughs> eagle, it looks troll, but he's getting a lot of information for his team right here. Yes, well, he does. I need, I need your insight, Arashi, about this. So is a 5v5 like a fight, like all 10 members on the screen fighting together? Who is supposedly going to win 5v5? Well, that depends. I, I'm... I'm Inclined to believe it's Team SMG, mm -hmm. right? More, uh, more sustained. Because of the Good gold AOE or well. the composition. Composition and gold, a bit of both. For, uh -huh. for Miracle, the only real advantage they have is the Beatrix with the AOE ultimates. Wow. But they won't even let him do that now. Shredding the Lord here. That's the true damage coming in from the carry. Mm -hmm. The Circling Eagle has also been popped again. Information, Smooth and Miko continue to be a nuisance in for Miracle's side as a free Lord falls into the hands of Team SMG. I don't know if yeah, I can count that as a win to Team 4 Miracle, but so far they haven't lost the life of Yahiko and also they only got one kill behind, but 
That's why we actually expect in international events and international tournaments, we don't see so much kills as how much the mentality of the players, how much the micro skills matter and how the drafting is. So one to one kill, even though there's no much kills, there's so much happening in the Land of Dawn. I think it's one of those situations where it's, it's not even about the kills for Team SMG, it's about mm. pressuring the enemy jungler. Yeah. I think if you look at the uh, items as well, Smooth is up there, man, with a with, with one to two K gold difference. We got the pan that just can't get a good engage right here. With the wave clear though, they will be able to defend. And this is where a lot of people are saying Team SMG starts falling off, man. They don't have long range damage right here, and they usually fall victim to a good base defense. Well. So if for Miracle Esports can hang on right here, they still have a chance to come back into the game. Well, that was my question at the first place. That was my question. Will Team 4 Miracle be able to make a successful, a successful or pull off a successful defense by having that composition? And I think Yahiko can buy some time for Team 4 Miracle. I totally agree with you, Yasu. I think that this is... Even though you are 8k behind, it's one of the more ideal situations for For Miracle. Obviously, they wouldn't want to shorten the gap, but it's really not up to them. It's all about, hey, is Team SMG going to make that move? Make that first move, make that first mistake, and then we punish. Especially when they're up against the base right here. Team SMG, we've seen them play a bit too passive almost. This is that threshold right here where, for the most part, a lot of the core items are completed for Team SMG. This is the mid-game power spike that they can really take advantage of but they're not, right? They're still waiting around in the jungle. They have started freezing the waves right here, so for, for Miracle Esports, it's going to be very difficult to still get the same level of income. So this is one way they can push their advantage. I think they're going to bank everything on the next Lord. Well, based on my personal experience, I don't know about you guys, I want you to also share your perspective about it, like share your stories with me, but have you ever seen such peaceful match, just one kill to one kill, and it, like how how low was it in terms of kills, based on your experience, uh, experiences? Was there something around that that finished with a one to one kill? Like, can the game finish? Oh, oh yeah, is? easily. I think it's what we call MPL PH, where uh, yep. the entire league <laughs> plays the game at a very so high level. So there is level. a league for that. Oh yeah, there's an entire league. It's in the <laughs> Philippines. It's happening in M5. If you don't know about it, now you know. But that, that's the thing, right? We're mm. expecting a lot of action to happen. But Team SMG is one of those like slow compounding, like we'll start early and then we'll slowly build that up and eventually we'll choke you out once we claim everything across the map. And they already did. They claimed everything. They claimed the whole jungle, but this is the problem with the freeze, man. A lot of the minions does fall to other minions, so here's a chance for, for Miracle Esports to get some gold income. <laughs> We're gonna try and find some some information, some vision to try and go towards the Lord, but it's gonna be a bit too difficult, man. Now they're uh, on the run. I think that today Lunatic Panda is gonna have some nightmares and definitely those nightmares will include Miko because he was seeing that man's face everywhere across the map. I would like to literally just like have a round of applause for Miko. He was so annoying to a way that Team 4 Miracle cannot even move from their own base. And now with the Lord coming in as well, they have a chance to go for a big fight with the Nether Realm. Now is when they, they go for a big all-in. It's hard to imagine them falling short in the proper fight, right? The goal difference between the Benedetta and the Terizda for one means that there's a frontline difference. Even in the, between Kerry and the Beatrix, man, 3k gold diff already having the win of nature. Wow. There's a chance he can just stay in the front there and just shred people down. They are worlds apart. Here it comes. The Lord is going to be able to charge in and crack open the first inhibitor for the side of Team SMG. They've got a synchronized split, but Ooh, now they're trying to get on top of Clock and force him to use all. Lunatic Panda tries oh. to capitalize on it, and even with the retribution from Soxa to slow him down, that's two inhibitors down for the side of Team SMG. Barely interacting, but forcing the correct ultimates for the side of Four Miracle. Now looking for the end. Soxa gets a great knock up. All saved by the help of the mid laner. It's not over yet. He manages to go and reach. Reset, Masarab is taking too much damage, the proc doesn't kill him, but Yahiko still holding up strong and very, very healthy, and worse yet, it just means that Team SMG will attempt and will succeed in getting the last inhibitor from For Miracle. But, whoa, smooth, hey, let's calm down. Oh, oh. Oh. Pull back and dead. Oh my god, they are just holding on the edge, Team For Miracle losing all their inhibitor turns, but did you manage to see that second skill from Diggy and then it was cancelled by the Akai Arashi? Like, there was a massive at Team 4 Miracle. 
Yeah, that is unfortunate as a heck, but now Sasa gets pulled back. That's a reverse time gaining, okay. but Masarab does not land the penalty zone. You gotta be a bit more calculative on that. And they have to try Ouch. and clear on the reverse time. Like you mentioned, Yasu, earlier, there was a reverse time that got almost cancelled by Lunatic Panda, pushing Saxa away from the fight. Now Miko once again scouts with the Circling Eagle. Without any base turrets, see that for Miracle Esports feel some momentum shift. They were able to get the kill on the smooth. I was gonna say it's a shutdown, but actually Ooh. he does not have a kill. <laughs> he actually Miko, got even his blue. Miko does take that purple buff though. Yeah, purple. I'm, I'm colorblind. Uh, don't worry about it. We have another friend who's also colorblind. <laughs> but I mean, for now, uh, from the way that I see it, this is, uh, I mean, it's a pretty slow-paced game, but it's very atypical of Team SMG, right? Mm -hmm. They like playing for advantages. And considering the real-time win rate, 67% to 33, it seems about right. Well, watching Team SMG before we come here to the wild card, I had I had to believe that these guys are robots. They just like move in a really synchronized way. They they want the objectives. They are not looking for blood. They are not looking for team fights. And so far, I think that's quite much it. Oh, hold on. We oh. go force the flicker out of there, but that does mean that the heavy spin has been utilized. Doesn't get any benefits whatsoever, and I think for Miracle are gonna call it here, right? Unless mm. Lunatic Panda is gonna live up to his name to steal this lore, Team SMG secures another one. Do you think that they could have engaged that Lord? Well, right there, I feel like it's a bit too late. You're just a bit mm. too late to the party. And with an 11k gold lead, unless you get a really good setup, I don't think you want to risk it. Now uh -huh. they have to defend against the Lord, and I think the only real advantage they have is the tankiness, right? They have two frontliners compared to one. If they can both really zone Sasa away just for <laughs> a little bit, that means that the backline can just be a bit more active. And we've seen Smooth get chunked down to half HP off the back of a single Renner's Apathy. There is a chance that for Miracle Esports can catch him off guard yet again. Well, Quack can make a surprising move against Team SMG by cancelling all their crowd control and even by applying some crowd control from Lunatic Banda, so they do have a chance to pull this defense off. But I think that it's gonna be so hard even having that Beatrix and the clearance possibility. All right, this might be the final moment. Saksa immediately finds on the Master Rob, gets out of there, but Space Ooh, Mike Rage. Smooth! Oh, smooth goes into the bat line, forces the time revolver also, and it's going the to be Nibiru's passion to try to hold it off. Both Nether Realms are going to be popping smooth, go straight the into base. the base, and that's game number one. The lowest kill count we have seen today here at the Wild Cards. Breaking records, breaking bones, breaking every Everything. Team SMG takes game one. A clean execution, man. Reminiscent of the Philippines, like we were talking about earlier. What an insane performance. Everything was calculated and they know when to turn it up. Before we were questioning their Lord usage, but look at that, dude. They used everything perfectly and there was just no answer back from For Miracle. They gotta try and solve this problem either in the early game or in the team fight executions because it's just not working out. Yeah, I think, you know, at least for the side of Team SMG, it really shows the experience, the target priority. They, it feels like they have eyes on all ends of the map. Well, actually, from, from my side, I think that at this moment, at this exact moment, when Team SMG had something to say, Team 4 Miracle just had to listen and to listen carefully because every time Team SMG was going in, they didn't hesitate in taking whatever they think it belongs to them and actually it did belong to them eventually because Team SMG wanted the turrets, they got the turrets, they wanted the gold lead, they got the gold lead, they wanted the lords, it was just as easy as taking like a piece of paper and cut it to two pieces. So. Team SMG was in control and in charge of this game and they were in command of every movement and as I told you, they were the ones who attack and Team 4 Miracle just had the opportunity to defense. I think that it begins in the laning phase, right? Especially uh -huh. in that EXP lane. Masarab was struggling hard, man. And even afterwards, he can really participate in the games as well, oh. in, in the big team fights. But this is gonna be <laughs> your MVP. The man with the chewing gum, the man with the writings <laughs> on his arm, it's Miko on the Mathilda. And can you, you know, it's just such a great performance and a 100% kill participation, technically, but, you know, the amount of kills are very, very low in this game. He just knows when to go in, and his scouting was just so difficult to deal with. Just circling Eagle again and again, and even if Formerical tries to punish him, he just finds a way to turn it back around. Miko, man, give him utility heroes that can really 
carry his team and he will make it happen. For me, I think that Miko at a certain point, like by seeing that uh, freeze item, he Which was right? planning on annoying team for Miracle even further. He wanted to engage at a certain point and just like freeze. Exactly, he can just bait out a lot of things with the Guiding Wind, with the Circling Eagle, and to a degree with the Winter Truncheon as well. So he can be, play a lot more aggressively, but you can see that his, his focus right here is to be that utility, right? He has the Flask of the Oasis, the Enchanted Talisman, and the Necklace of Durance. So his whole goal here is not just to go in and be the front line, even though technically there isn't a lot of front lines available. SMG, they are just that confident. And in the early game, despite their great start, they, were, they lost Sasa to this early game aggression. But afterwards, look at the plays, man. Cutting away members of For America away from their safe zones. It just makes it so difficult for them to run away, especially because they have such low mobility. Like the Diggy and the Terizla, what can you do when there are people be between you and your base? Well, I mean, you just gotta do what Team SMG do. Uh, lay out a bunch of Legos on the floor and hopefully when you're rotating, you step on one of them and it's too late. <laughs> and you look at the coordination right there. That was the heavy spin that canceled out the reverse time. But afterwards, Smooth was just a bit too, uh, too zealous with it. Gets pulled back here with the reverse time. Gives a kill away. But overall, it's still fine. He was so confident as well, moving against five people, despite the fact that he was particularly squishy there, losing half his HP. And look at Miko here. This is a great move, pulling away the bombs from the Lord, denying the fast clear, allowing them to use the Lord in a more efficient manner. Well, I, I well, I, I have to say, for Miracle, have some good ideas. It's the execution, is it not? Yeah, but actually, there was one moment in the highlights that actually caught my eyes. I think that. At a moment, Benedetta had all Team for Miracle aligned underneath the ultimate, but if it wasn't for the second skill from Diggy, it was just gonna be a really good, like, clean slicing moment mm -hmm. for that Benedetta. And it just, like, it didn't work enough. I, I really wanted to see that smooth execution from Smooth. If you look at his emblems, man, he went with the Festival of Blood, he went with the Fighter Emblem. It's all about that aggressive style. And it really worked out. 1v1 against a Terizla, usually you would expect a Benedetta to struggle just a bit, right? Especially when you're dueling. But Smooth doesn't care, man. He just wins out in the clear, he goes around in the Not jungle. And if you look at his how he was rotating, right? The rest of the team are going topside, he'll just farm up the bottom side jungle. So as a secondary, uh, uh, secondary effect here, Lunatic Panda also falls back heavily in the gold department. If you look at the gold right here for all these teams and the items, of course, Sasa in this game was completely untouched, man. In the fights, he wasn't threatened. In the laning phase, they weren't able to gank him and get anything meaningful. Everything from the turrets to the lore to the turtle right here, and even the purple buff, they only gave away two to Lunatic Panda. And it's not even just... Uh, just uh, Saksa coming in and stealing it. Sometimes Miko and Smooth, they go in and they become a huge problem in their own right. Well, I would like you to hold on to that, but I would actually want to ask Gideon a question. So, a 3-2 to two result is actually something that we will see. And it, like, you said that it has an, its own league, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So, it is normal now. Well, I wouldn't say it's the most normal in the world, considering that we have a lot of other MPLs going yeah. on at the same time, but it's definitely towards the highest level of styles. I mean, considering that the amount of gold from Sasa coming out at 754, even though it was an almost 16-minute game, still kind of surprising. It just shows that it's a play style, not yeah. being greedy. Yeah. And on the other hand, for Lunatic Panda, it just feels like he wasn't able to get anything really meaningful in this game. No real big pins, no real big catches, and if the idea was to use it for the neutral objectives, they really did not get a chance at all, man. We, we thought that with the double engaged threat, the penalty zone and the heavy spin, maybe for America can get something, can really threaten something from SMG. But it seems like for SMG, they just dealt with it one by one and they move on to the next thing. Very uh, calm and calculated. But for team, for Miracle especially, I don't think when we, when we get to see all the damage for, from the players themselves, upon like the other players, not the turret damage. I don't think that there was like so much team, team fights and like being pushed away. I think it, they were like playing so passive to away that they just avoided playing against Team SMG. 
I think they were concerned about the early game situation here. And against mm. a Faramis and Mathilda, can you really blame them, right? We said it earlier, the first phase, Mathilda, Faramis, and Guinevere was taken from Team SMG. And that is a lot of super prior heroes that are usually pick or ban. So they have a lot of crowd control, they have a lot of sustain, and more mobility as well. So that on top of 